Hear this. When next somebody looks at you and say, Wow, your hair is beautiful. You look beautiful. Tell them, wait until you see the glory. <laughs> My God, I love your hair cut. Your suit is clean. Wait until you see the glory. There's something greater that you have not seen. Because this treasure is in earthen vessel. Hallelujah. When it manifests, you will see God. Give the Lord a shout. Sit down for a moment. Sit down for a moment. Let me show you how to draw the glory. Let me show you. Number one is through beholding. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 3.18 The glory is there. It said, but we all with open faces beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord. It said we are changed into that image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the living God. The glory is there but you need metamorphosis. And they said the key for transfiguration is beholding. You know, it's like a photocopy machine. The paper may look empty, but wait until the light passes through. You will be shocked the next time you look. Everything in the original copy is replicated the same on the paper and look empty. That's metamorphosis. See, when you carry the world and you are beholding the world, after a while you see that the light will appear that light is what draws glory out of you the bible said in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god it said the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and he said the life was the light of men see when you look at that word the light in that world is what illuminates you. He said to the Jews, it is a stumbling block. He said to the Greek, it is foolishness. He said, but to us who are being saved, whether Jew or Greek, he said, Christ is the wisdom of God and the power of God. And so everywhere I need judgment, I don't need to shout. I bring Christ on the scene. Everywhere I need dominion, I don't need to shout. See, they are marginalizing you. They are trying to turn you up and down. They are trying to rubbish you. Bring Christ. When Christ shows up, dominion will show up. Hey, if it is taking place in the city, if it is happening, you have done all the strategy session. It didn't work. Bring Christ. When Christ shows up, judgment will show up. Iniquities everywhere. People are fornicating. People are perverting the ordinances of God. Bring Christ. When Christ shows up, purity shows up. This is why Christ has become the solution of humanity. We preach Christ and Him crucified. To the Jews, it is foolishness. A stumbling block. To the Greek, it's foolishness. But to us who are being saved, whether Jew or Greek, Christ is the wisdom of God. Is the power of God. You know, I've traveled around preaching this gospel for a little while. You go to certain places and you see people who are suffering from the wickedness of others. Somebody goes somewhere and afflicts somebody through demonic powers. And you see people carrying the yokes of pains, the yokes of frustration. And then you show up and you just talk about Jesus. And then the presence appears. <laughs> when the presence comes, you know the house of God is there. And then as you are talking, suddenly judgment is released. And then that person who carried that yoke for 10 years, suddenly the yoke is broken. And then not too long, the wicked people that perpetrated it, if they don't repent, then judgment visits their home. And then they begin to confess. And they are wondering, what did you do? Oh, powerful man of God came. It's not about powerful man of God. It's who you came with. Christ came. So judgment came. Judgment came. I've seen people who were marginalized. What they deserved, what they qualified for, was taken from them and they had no body. And then we just preached Christ to them. And it looked as if we didn't help them. But as they left, Christ then went with them. And then they go to the same place where they were being marginalized. And suddenly, the dominion of Christ rises on their inside. And the places where they were enslaved, they become rulers. And even themselves can't understand. Christ is the wisdom of God. Every one of us carry the fullness of God's glory. 
you see the beautiful thing is that as you begin different dimensions of the glory begins to manifest for some of us we begin with dominion for others we begin with purity for others we begin with power for others we begin with wisdom but by all means journey from somewhere we all with open faces you know the problem we know all the psychology we know all the physics we know all the chemistry all of that is good but if that's all we know the glory will never manifest he said with joy shall ye draw waters out of the wells of salvation you must make sure the glory in you is revealed because that's the errand of the glory the glory was not putting you to be locked there it was putting you to be revealed but the technology of bringing out the glory is the world that's why jesus said man shall not live by bread alone he said but by every word because when you see the world you see jesus jesus is not necessarily the picture we see around jesus is the word in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god so if you want to behold jesus go to the world as you are beholding the world christ will come out and when you see him you become like him we all with open faces. Then John, first John 3 verse 2 say, when we shall see him, we shall be like him. And there are different dimensions that you see per time. But you must sit there until you see something. The first technology of manifesting the glory is to behold the world. Thank God for the stories we hear. They inspire us, but they are nothing compared to the world. One verse of scripture is more important than a thousand stories. Because that verse of scripture is a dimension of God. And as you see it, you become it. We all with open verses. Beholding us in the glass. Why do you think the devil is so passionate about showing us negative things? When there is a negative news, it goes viral. Why do you think the devil works that way? You look around, you see naked pictures everywhere. He's trying to introduce corruption into you. But you know the way you are corrupt is by what you see. Is by what you hear so he litters it everywhere you go on the internet and you hear all the dirty languages so that your spirit will eat it because your spirit eat words and as you see those words and hear those words you feed on it so you become corruption you may not be fornicating but if you know you are supposed to pray and you don't pray that is flesh i feel like sleeping we don't live the way we feel like we live the way life dictates to us by the spirit and it is in doing it that the life and the power of the glory is manifested. He said, but who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. He said, for the law of life that is in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus. He said, that set me free from the law of sin and death. So what we obey is the promptings of life in our spirit. It's the promptings of life. This is why obedience in the New Testament is not burdensome. It is part of who you are. It's like a child who is newly born. That child doesn't need to be told, eat in the morning, eat in the afternoon. No, hunger will make sure he eats. The moment he comes out of the womb, the child begins to cry, looking for what to eat. And nobody needs to educate the child that food should be eaten through the mouth. The moment he finds something, the child instinctively puts it in the mouth. That's the way the law of life works. The moment you are born of God, the life of God begins to dictate to you. Your obedience to the dictate of that life is what reveals glory in your life. I remember some years ago, I woke up in the morning, wanted to eat. It was like food was a sin. And I didn't know. I went ahead and ate. And I lost my peace the whole day. <laughs> Lord, what did I do? I had a girlfriend. You were the one who told me to leave her. I struggled with her. Why are you still angry? <laughs> I was coming from the place of prayer. And the voice of God screamed at me. And when God was talking, light came out of the wall. And I was hearing and the light was coming and entering me. And he called the name of this lady that became an idol in my soul. He said, leave her. You will see my power in your life. I didn't know that the key to the glory was obedience. And that was where my journey of power began. Six months I was struggling. I was struggling. I was struggling. The flesh is weak. That's why we need the help of the Holy Ghost. But when I eventually dissociated, I started seeing things happen through me. Oh, I will talk people will go and have encounters. I will talk to people, they will be staying. They will stand up. Addiction will die. Too much will leave them. I said, this is not the doctrine I was taught. What is going on here? I didn't know that all I was taught was the proof that God was in me. But to draw God out of me was an experiential reality. And obedience was the key. A platform is not this. This is not our platform. The challenges the devil brings to us 
are the platform for our manifestation that's why we testify when we turn things around but for that to happen you must be an active participator in the glory economy be all with open faces we must behold oh we must obey oh we must travel listen teach your mouth to pray he said men ought always to pray and not to faint that means if you don't pray you will faint the opposite of prayer is not prayerlessness the opposite of prayer is fainting when sickness comes it will take you down when the enemy comes it will take you down but if you pray in the midst of crisis you will rise up like mount zion that cannot be moved the bible says when the enemy shall come in he said like a flood the spirit of the lord shall lift up his standard the reason many can't see that standard lifted is because the glory has not yet been tampered see as we leave this conference begin that journey the bible said concerning jesus in mark 35 he said in the cool of the day early in the morning he went to a solitary place there he prayed jesus didn't show up and say i'm the son of god i do what i want no he knew the technology he gave himself to prayer and the apostles also knew this it's not meant for us to give ourselves to tables Acts chapter 6 verse 4 he said we will give ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the world because the power we wield is not because we are called apostles the power we wield is because we are able to release glory from our spirit every one of us here carry everlasting waters on our inside but how much of it is flowing you say out of their belly shall flow rivers rivers my river will not be short my fountains will not be dry i will make sure from the altar I am expand the outlets of my fountain. Look at the prayer of Jesus Christ. John 17 verse 22. He said, Father, he said, the glory that you gave to me, I didn't keep it for myself. He said, the glory that you gave to me, I have given to them. The glory. You know, Jesus was the only one manifesting the glory of God. In John chapter 1 verse 14, the Bible said, of his fullness no go to go to john 1 14 first before i go to 16. he said and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth what is his glory when the demon showed up he revealed god's authority when there was no boat he was not stranded he walked on water when there was no food there was no need to beg he multiplied bread when the sick showed up he was not confused he healed them because he carried the fullness of god the word glory is the word carboid it means the fullness he carried the fullness where there was need for judgment there was judgment where there was need for authority there was authority where there was need for dominion there was dominion why because the word became flesh and dwelt among us so he put the glory of god on display now jesus wants to leave and he said the glory that you gave to me that means the dominion you gave me that means the authority you gave me that means the judgment you gave me that means the purity you gave me the righteousness you gave me he said i have given to them so john 1 16 said of his fullness have we all received grace heaped upon grace that means everything christ demonstrated we are expected to demonstrate and much more and not too long what you see in the scripture you begin to manifest you are reading the scripture they say jesus laid hands on the sick the sick recover and then you're going somewhere and they told you somebody is sick and then that life begins to pull you it's time to lay hands you have never been taught how to lay hands but the life in you is an unction they say you have received an unction from the holy ghost and you need no man to teach you anything he said for that unction itself teaches you all things and then you to lay hands the way jesus laid hands and then you thought nothing will happen until the person shouts ah i'm healed and then you are wondering what happened to my hand metamorphosis has happened we all with open faces beholding us in the glass the glory of the lord we are changed there is a transfiguration that happens on a daily basis but you must behold you must behold see there are times when god will keep you on one verse of scripture that means the idea is not to memorize memorizing it is the kindergarten level the idea is to become that verse that's why sometimes you discover you just carry a scripture it said in my name cast out devils 
in my name cast out devils you are walking and it's echoing in your spirit you are washing it's echoing in your spirit you are eating it's echoed even when you go to sleep the word is echoed it means something is going on egg is about to become butterfly an ordinary man is about to become a supernatural man we all with open faces beholding us in the glass anybody who wants to manifest the glory must become a friend of the world he said until i come first timothy 4 13 give attendance to reading to exhortation to doctrine give attendance to reading to exhortation to doctrine verse 15 he said give thyself wholly to these things he said that thy profiting may be made manifest to all in joshua 1 verse 8 he said this book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth don't let it depart you are what you say he enters your mind but he enters your spirit when you say it he said you shall mutter it you shall haggai it day and night you shall haggai it day and night seeing that you do what is written therein he said then you shall make thy way prosperous and then you shall have good success he said if you sow in the flesh you of the flesh reap corruption he said but if you sow into the spirit he said you shall of the spirit reap life everlasting this is why those who want to manifest glory we know what to knock ourselves away from there are people that i will never be in their company no matter what they promise there are places i will never go no matter how appealing it is there are things i will never have there are things i will never see there are things i will never hear because i know my spirit is an incubator there is a glory there that i must protect but there are other things that on a daily basis whether i'm tired or not it does not matter i must see them and i must hear them see when i started learning this even when i sleep sometimes i play messages i'm playing worship and then you see that these things are drawing glory out of you they are drawing glory out of you and then you go to a place and you see a manifestation you've never seen before what happened the glory has increased see make sure the glory on your life increases on a daily basis but the way to do it is by beholding is by beholding analyze scriptures meditate on scriptures talk scriptures look upon it hear it and you'll see how your life will change you'll be amazed the level of intellect you suddenly have because there is a level you get to and the mind of christ superimposes your own mind and then even the things you didn't study you know and you don't know how you know you know by the glory because in the mind of christ is all the wisdom of god number two how do you release the glory is through obedience you want to see glory in your life your obedience quotient must be large in john chapter 14 verse 19 to 21 jesus listen these are secrets of the kingdom every christian must know them and practice them jesus was speaking john 14 19 to 21 let's go there quickly he said yet a little while he said the word seeth me no more he said but ye see me because I live, you shall live also. Hmm. What is scripture? I remember when the Holy Ghost told me this scripture. I was dying of sickness. I laid on my bed, almost giving up. But God is awesome. Because even when I thought I was going to die, He saw Sydney. <laughs> he knew, He knew, God knew I have to stand on this stage today. He knew. Because, because the same yesterday today and forever he knew this day must come but i was there in despair thinking i was going to die and suddenly a being sat on my bed i was so scared because of the glory that the being brought the bed decompressed but i couldn't turn and then i heard because i leave you shall see tomorrow oh! the moment i heard that word a dark being came out of me and left it so, see these scriptures are powerful they are not stories they are capsules that contain god that's why you must eat them daily because i leave he said you shall leave also and in verse 20 he said at that day he said you shall know that i am in my father and you in me and i in you what a combination i'm in my father you are in me i am in you that means me you and the father are one this is the technology of divinity this is what God has brought us into. This is why we are the blessed of this world. The greatest thing that has happened to the world is the manifestation of Christians. The manifestation of believers in Christ. Because we brought God into human equation. 
they brought God into human civilization. He said, I'm in the Father, the Father is in me, and you are in me, and I am in you. We have become a complex combination of God and man. One of the ways the devil fights you is by silencing the voice of your altar. Because he knows that that is where the technology of glory is processed. And if he shuts down your altar, he can shut down your destiny. That's why the Bible said in Leviticus 6 12, he said, The fire on the altar must not be put out. He said, The priest must put wood on it every morning. Every day, service that altar. That's the gateway to glory. And you see, as you keep servicing that altar, one of the ways glory comes out is that joy wells up in your spirit. And that's why the fourth way to release glory is by joy. Joy is not happiness. A man can be full of joy in the midst of crisis. Nothing may be working, but that joy becomes a strength. Because joy is a spiritual substance. And when that substance is secreted upon the tablets of your heart, one of the things it does is that it releases glory. That's why he said with joy, you draw waters out of the wells of salvation. He said the joy of the Lord is my strength, but joy comes in the morning. Where is the morning? The morning is the dwellings of light. When you press into God, you break into his realm. And that is where joy comes from. That's why he said, be anxious for nothing. He said, but by all things, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, he said, let the peace of God that surpasses knowledge guarantee your heart. There is something that happens to your heart so that glory can come out. He said, guard your heart with all diligence. Out of it are the issues of life. When the heart is preserved, when the heart is protected, life can come out. Glory can come out. But you can't preserve your heart except as you stay in the place of prayer. When we begin to travel, we give birth to offsprings. Some of you will give birth to nations. Some of you give birth to dimensions of the spirit that have never been seen. You will think come out of you that the world wondered. Men read about Elisha in the Bible that he could sit in his bedroom and hear the contemplations of the king in a distant land. And we thought those were realities of Bible days until a man called Maron Branham showed up and made us understand that those things are in the spirit. When men pray, their spirit can accommodate them. And people began to leave certain dimensions on the face of the earth that prove that God is real. What will you leave for your generation? What will you be remembered for? What will be the testimonies of God that your life gave expression to? You came to this mountain because you too must manifest the glory. The glory was installed in you in Christ, but you must partner with the Holy Ghost to allow it find expression. Can we pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute? I never knew it. And God kept teaching me. Months later was when fasting, the, the syllabus of fasting was introduced to me. It was not a church that said, let's fast in January. Life knew that the next level I was about to enter. Fasting was the key. I needed to obey God to walk in that dimension of power. And so I ate that food. It was like I, it was like I murdered somebody. I lost my peace. I couldn't rest. The next day I stood up. I wanted to eat. I didn't see no. When I started chewing, I now felt like I was sinning. What's going on here? Am I supposed to fast? But there's no fasting program in church. All I knew was we fast when church said to fast. I never knew that God will have to draw every one of us to that private corner where he walks with us as a friend. Where he walked with us as his intimate, I never knew. It was on the third day that it dawned on me that God wanted me to fast. And I began a fast for 21 days. It was after 21 days that the body lifted. And I ate for 6 to 9 days, the body came again. And I fasted another 21 days. In that year, for 6 months, I kept fasting 21 days, 21 days, 21 days. When I finished that fasting, something blew up. I knew the key of power like I knew my name. See, when the law of life begins to dictate to you, be happy. Know that there is glory at the end of the tunnel. The way God brings us into glory is by putting us in a pathway where obedience is demanded. That's why I say when your obedience is completed, they say that's when you will avenge all that disobedience. Because that's when the glory will manifest. They say if you love me, you will keep my commandment. And if you keep my commandment, I will manifest myself through you. Many carry the glory. But they can't manifest the glory because their obedient quotient is low. They do what they like, how they like it, when they like it. And that's why they can't see God when they need God to manifest. There's not one of us here that has more glory than the other. All of us carry Christ in us. And so the fullness of God's glory is locked in our inside. It's the measure of manifestation that is different. And what makes manifestation different 
it's not because you are white or black it's not because we are tall or short it's not because we are male or female it's because we obey god when life brings laws into your spirit christ is the power of god this is why he becomes the beauty and the excellency of christianity christ is all we know christ is all we preach christ is all we are and christ is enough because he is the fullness of the godhead bodily this is so beautiful this is so remarkable when you know this your life changes because an army can rise up against you and you may not have anybody to call you may not have anybody to summon and then you go back to christ and christ tells you don't worry all the angels of heaven are subject to me all the kings of the earth their heart is in my hand i am dominion personified and then you just rise up and you see an army collapse before you like a pack of cards. and then they are wondering what did you do i didn't do anything i came with christ because christ is enough this is the secret of christianity the secret of christianity is that we don't just obey rules we carry god on our inside you have gathered here tonight because of jesus and the goal of this meeting is that when you live here you will live with the consciousness of jesus you know where this thing becomes even more beautiful it becomes more beautiful in that everything christ is he didn't keep it for himself he decided to hand it over because him becoming flesh was not the original plan the original plan was for god to be in you the reason he became flesh was because the first experiment failed when the first experiment failed there was no need to risk a second experiment because the outcome would be the same that was why he came and this is why when he put away everything that negated the first experiment he left he stood with his disciples and he told them it is better for you that i leave and they said no 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 lord lord we know you are a master of wisdom but this wisdom doesn't add up when you were here with us demons showed up you cast them out when you were here with us the sick showed up you healed them how can it be better for you to go when you go we become handicapped and jesus said no i came to show you the formula i came to show you the manual i came to show you the possibility he said when i leave the holy ghost will come so that what i am is must produce in you we don't have the capacity to travel with our environment but because god lives in god god has to travel with his house God has to travel with his environment. So every time you come into God's atmosphere, you have seen God's face. So God's face is his covering. God's face is his environment. Exodus 33 verse 20. He said, the Lord said unto, he said, and he said, thou cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. The word face there is the word panin. It means you cannot come into the, the circumference of the full weight of my presence and when we read the bible we discovered god didn't say any man who see me will die when we read the bible we discovered anybody who comes into that presence is transfigured because the bible said in third first john chapter 3 verse 2 it said when we shall see him we shall be like him so the reason he told moses you can't see me and live is not because you will die it's because if you see me you'll be transfigured and you'll become like god so it's his atmosphere. You too will become a partaker of my dwelling place. He said, as soon as Zion traveled, Paul was speaking in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2 and 3. He said, for this cause we grow. He said that we might be clothed with our heavenly tabernacle. So Paul too knew the technology that when we grow in the place of prayer, glory comes out of us. Oh, what a shame that a man who should walk in dominion is walking as a slave. He said, I've seen an abomination upon the face of the earth. He said, princes are trekking, white beggars are riding on horses. What created that abomination is that glory is not manifesting. Because the part of glory, one of the parts of glory is dominion. If that dominion had manifested, it would have been possible for princes to trek. But he didn't travel. If he traveled, dominion would have manifested. Oh, wisdom is part of glory. But the guy is stranded in the most strategic junctions of his life. He can't make decisions because he doesn't know what to do he's confused because that elemental dimension of glory god wisdom has not yet manifested the guy is frustrated matters that he needs to speak and power is released but he keeps begging and talking nothing happens what if glory had manifested most of the attacks that come to our life are the platforms for our manifestation but we need glory to make them platforms 
is by travail. You want to see glory? <laughs> you must spend time in prayer. Oh, only those who pray see glory. Jesus himself, who, if you read John chapter 1 verse 1, you are going to see the qualification of Jesus. He said, in the beginning was the word. He said, the word was with God. And he said, the word was what? God. Qualification number one, Jesus is God. Number two, he said, all things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Qualification number two, Jesus is creator. In him was life. Qualification number three, Jesus is what? Life. And that life was the light of men. So Jesus is the animator of the realities of men. Four qualification, but there was no glory showing for it. The moment he went and fasted and prayed for 30 days, the Bible said he returned in the power of the Spirit. Luke 4, 14 and 15. Matthew 4, 14. And he said the land of Zebulun. He said the land of Naphtali. By the way of the sea beyond Jordan. Galilee of the Gentile. The people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. He walked into the temple. Demons began to scream. What is going on? He had troubled the glory. It's not that he, that was the first time he prayed. But that was when he wanted to make it public. And the precursor for making the glory of God in him so potent was when he fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. Demons were screaming. He had not preached. Why have you come before your time? What happened? The glory that was locked inside has been made visible. And demons can recognize it. Men can recognize it. But it took fasting and prayer to draw that river out. No wonder he kept at it. In Matthew 17 verse 2 and 3, he said after eight days, he took Peter, James and John to a mountain and he said, here he prayed. And he said, as he prayed, as he prayed, he said the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to blister. Even his garment, the Bible said, began to shine. So Jesus knew the technology of unlocking the glory was prayer and travail. No wonder the Bible said, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So the children we give birth to are not just biological children. If all the children you have are the boys and girls you named, you don't have children. The real people who are parents in the spirit are those who have stayed on the altar until children came out of them. And one of those children is the glory of God that you carry. Paul said, henceforth, no we no man after the flesh. Thank God for the biological children you have. But your true eternal legacy is not your children. They are the things that you brought into creation on account of your intercourse with the Holy Spirit. And every one of us who want to be partakers of the world that is to come, we must be betters of glory. So there are things about you that no matter how you study, you can't find. They must be shown to you. This is why we stay on the altar. So that the one that keeps secrets can reveal to us the dimensions of our spirits. And when your dimensions are revealed to you, you will see that evil kings will come to the brightness of your eyes. We don't go looking for kings. They come to us. But the key to bringing them is that our light will become bright. So they come to the brightness of our rising. All of that is what God has put in us. So no Christian should be stranded. No Christian should be frustrated. If what you are going through is not changing, increase the intensity of your light. The Bible spoke concerning John. He said he was a burning and a shining light. He said, and the whole of you went to him. Imagine a guy burning so much and he knew the powers of his flame. He didn't go to the city center. He went to the wilderness. And even in the wilderness, men looked for John and came there. You don't know what men will go through to reach you if your light will shine. Oh, and when men come, they don't come empty-handed. They bear with them treasures. They bear with them honor. They bear with them dignities to find you. That's why your light must shine. He said, arise, shine. Your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It said, Gentiles shall come to thy light. It said, Kings shall come to the brightness of thy rising. Jesus said, Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good work and glorify your Father. Let your light so shine. The way you let that light shine is by prayer. It's by prayer. It's by prayer. We will give ourselves to prayer. Oh, 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 oh. 